uh, good morning everybody so i am uh, cr pravi uh, at uh, chinnabaswashra institute of technology i am here to help you learn your uh, math dip 401 uh, so oh, i have to share the screen before i uh, one minute yeah share the screen share okay so the whole screen is shared so what you need to know is this is your syllabus syllabus is broken up into yeah, so that you can easily attempt your exams eight parts one question from uh, you have to answer one question from five i don't know uh, five questions totally uh, so there will be two questions from each part i think and you have to answer one of them so that part is check with your uh, uh, syllabus uh, Oh, I'm going to tell you all the eight topics uh, the, for, for which the questions is going to come for your exam. So uh, the first part is this. First question will come from this part, which will have distance formula, division formula, direction, cosines, direction ratios, and planes. Second question is going to be from this, etc., etc. Two of them are basically solid geometry, and three of them are vectors. First one is vector algebra. Next two are vector calculus, and then next three units are basically Laplace transforms. So we'll study all of these. Um, I, I'll explain, I'll help you learn these things. Uh, I will be using this uh, PPT for this. I will also use GeoGebra to help you understand some of the topics. So I will, we will go through this whenever we need it. Uh, right now, I'll start with this solid geometry part. Mm -hmm. So let me. <clears throat> so the solid geometry, what is the syllabus? As I've already told you, there will be uh, two questions based on these. Uh, you'll have to attempt two questions based on these. One is distance formula, division formula, direction cosines and direction ratios, planes, straight lines, angle between the planes. So what do we learn here? So for that, let me uh, go to GeoGebra. So here it is. All our solid geometry is done in a three-dimensional space like this. What this means is you have x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, right-handed system. The red line is the x-axis. Green line is the y-axis. Blue line is the z-axis. You can see the positive coordinates. One, two, the x coordinates, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Similarly, positive y coordinates, blue one, a uh, green one, one, two, three, this side is negative, and this side is negative x axis. This is positive z axis, this is negative z axis. Any point is any point in this three dimensional space is given by three coordinates. So let me show you three, uh, some point. So here is one point. Uh, and then I will move it anywhere I want. So this is the chord. A is this point. You can see point A here A is given by 5, 2.84, 4.5. It means X coordinate is 5, Y coordinate is 2.84, Z coordinate is 4.5. That basically means I come on X2 and on Y 2.84 and then on Z I go 4.58 on this. So I end up at this point. That is what this three coordinates mean. Similarly, I want to pick up one more point. So let us pick it up somewhere else. So and this I will move it somewhere here. Okay. So this is point B whose coordinates you can see here, minus 6.71. That means on X core, X axis, I go minus 6.71 somewhere here. And then on Y, I go minus 1.35. That means somewhere like this. And then on Z, I go to 0.83. So I end up here. Now, what I want to know is, what is the distance between these two? What does that mean? If I draw a line segment from this point to this point, I want to know its length. Uh, try to understand. See, you see, these points are not moved. When I see it from different angles, you can see the length of AB will not change. Here it looks as if it is changing. That is because you are seeing from different angles. Point A and point B, given XYZ coordinates of point A, 
given x, y, z coordinates of point B, how to find distance between these two? Distance means you can see it on the picture. I won't define all these things, but you understand what distance means. If you draw a straight line from A to B, what is the length of A, B? That is what we are trying to figure out here. For that, we will use this formula that is called distance formula. So distance formula, so this is what I, I just showed you this, A, B, B, a line segment in a three dimensional space with A is X1, Y1, Z1, B is X2, Y2, Z2 as coordinates of A and B. So this is how it looks, A is here, A is a point here, B is a point here. I showed you in the picture, A was some particular example I had taken, similarly B also had taken particular example. Then the distance between A and B, which I'll call AB, or D of AB is given by this formula, X2 minus root of X2 minus X1 whole square plus Y2 minus Y1 whole square plus Z2 minus Z1 whole square. This is a very simple, straightforward application of Pythagoras theorem. Proof is not there in your syllabus, so I won't bother telling you. So what you need to know is, if you give me X, Y, X1, Y1, Z1, and X2, Y2, Z2, I know how to find the distance between them by this formula. Let's check once quickly one example. Distance between the points A and B, where A is 2, 3, 7, and B is 4, 8, 10. So in this case, what we do is, uh, I will apply this formula. Distance between A and B is x2 minus x1, y2 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square, whole thing under root sign. This is what we know the formula. So here x1, y1, z1 is the first point, 2, 3, 7. x2, y2, z2 is the second point, which is 4, 8, 10. So let us use this. A is this, B is this. So distance between A and B is x2 root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square, which is you substitute for x2, 4, y, uh, x1, 2. This is x2, y2, z2, 4, 8, 10 and x1, y1, z1 is 2, 3, 7. I substitute that in this formula. So 4 minus 2 whole square plus 8 minus 3 whole square plus 10 minus 7 whole square, whole thing under root sign. So 4 minus 2, 2, 2 square is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 square. 8 minus 3 is 5, 5 square. 10 minus 7 is 3, 3 square. So 2 square is 4, 5 square is 25, 3 square is 9, 4, 25 plus 4 plus 9. Uh, looks like it's 38 root 38. Please check. I might make mistakes with some numericals. So please make sure that I don't, I mean, even if I made you, please correct. In this case, I think I have not made any mistake. Let us check. Uh, okay, one more example. Find the distance between the points A and B where A is 1 minus 3 minus 1 and 4 minus 5, 1. So understand here why we are doing this example is there is a negative coordinate also. In the previous example, all coordinates are positive. Same formula to use use the same distance formula which tells you which tells you that distance between them is x2 minus x1 whole square etc etc under root sign where x1 y1 z1 is now a first point one comma minus three comma minus one that is this is x1 x1 is one x uh, y1 is minus three and z1 is minus one and x2 y2 z2 is four minus five one so we will use this same formula so x2 minus x1, 4 minus 1. So I'll write that 4 minus 1 whole square. y2 minus 1, y2 minus y1, minus 5, minus minus 3. Please note here, many children make mistakes here. So minus 5, minus minus 3. You have to take this minus whatever is here. So minus here it is minus 5 and here it is minus 3. So minus 5, minus minus 3. You're just plugging for value y2 and y1. Similarly, for z2 minus z1, 1 minus minus 1 whole square. I mean, 1 minus minus 1 whole square. That is what we need to do. So this is 4 minus 1 whole square is 3 square, 5. So that's easy part. This one is minus 5 minus minus 3. Minus minus 3 means plus 3. Minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2. So I return minus 2 whole square, 1 minus minus 1. That is 1 plus 1, which is 2, 2 square. So 3 square plus minus 2 whole square plus 2 square. But minus 2 whole square is same as 4. 3 square is, of course, 9. And 2 square is, of course, 4. So 9 plus 4 plus 4, which is 13 plus 4, 17. Root 17 is the distance between 
these two points. That is what we have concluded from this formula. Now, uh, I mean, I'm sure given any two points, you'll be able to find distance between them using the distance formula. Now, what I want you to understand is, they may not ask you such a straightforward question, give you two points and find the distance between them. They might instead ask something like this. Oh, well, you see, I'm giving you three points in the space. One is one zero, P called 100, Q called 010, and R called 01001. Now, these three form vertices of an equilateral triangle. That's what is being asked to prove, show that P100, Q010, and R001 are vertices of an equilateral triangle. How we will do it is equilateral triangle means all the sides must be equal, all three sides must be equal to each other. So we will try to find distance between PQ, QR, and PR and show they are all equal. So I would like to show you this explicitly on the uh, picture. So let us not bother about this. Uh, this old one, let me delete this, A and B. Now new P and Q, P, Q, R are there. P is uh, 100, zero, zero, right? P is 1, comma, 0, comma, 0. So this is what is given to me. Please understand this. It's given that P100, zero, zero, Q010, zero, zero, and R001. Zero, zero, so remember three points. So P is 100. Zero, zero. If I mark that, you can see it's marked here. P is here, 100. Zero, zero. Similarly, I want Q is 0, 1, 0. So I have marked it here. You see Q is 0, 1, 0. This is the Y axis. The green one is the Y axis, I told you. And the red one is the X axis. And similarly, I will also mark R is equal to uh, 0, 0, 1. So I have marked these three points. So let us try to see, zoom in and see, zoom. Zoom in, yeah, I want to make it slightly bigger. So let's see. So you can see the points now, P, Q, R. So let us check, just a minute. This 3D graphics always a bit of a problem. You? One minute, just one minute. And I wanted to show you all these three points. So here is P, Q, R. Now I want to draw line segments, P, Q. So I'll join P with Q and I will join Q with R. Q with R and R with P. Of course, it looks like a uh, what? It looks like a um, just a minute. I will try to. Oh, I can't move it like this. So let me zoom. Uh, let us try this. I want you to see this triangle. Ah, here it is. You can see the triangle from various angles. See, you can see this is the red one is x axis, green one is y axis, and blue one is z axis. You can see the triangle. Now, this triangle is supposed to be equilateral triangle. Of course, if I see it from here, it doesn't look like equilateral triangle because PQ seem to be bigger than RQ, for example, QR, for example. But that's not true because we are seeing it wrong, whatever it means. So, and then actually by this, uh, uh, you can see the line segment here, GeoGebra will give you line segment also. So line segment uh, PQ is actually equal to 1.41. Line segment QR is 1.41. Line segment RP is also 1.41. Their lengths. This is what this gives. But let's not bother too much about this part. I want. I, I have to show this without using this GeoGebra. So here. So I use distance formula to find that GeoGebra was given to you just to make you understand what we are trying to do. But actually, how you have to do is like this. Uh, you have to use distance formula to find the distance between each pair of points which means, uh, just a minute, slide show, I'll start from wherever I have stopped. So here it is where. So find length of PQ, QR and RP. So I know given point P is 100, Q is 010, R is 001. So PQ will be this, zero, one, uh, you see PQ will be 
I'll call this Q coordinates of Q as x2, y2, z2, and coordinates of P as x1, y1, z1. So it will be x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square. So 0 minus 1 whole square plus 1 minus 0 whole square plus 0 minus 0 whole square. I hope you understand this. this when I'm trying to find length PQ, coordinates of Q are x2, y2, z2. Coordinates of P are x1, y1, z1. So I use that x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square. So that will be minus one whole square is one, one, one minus zero whole square is one. So zero minus zero whole square is zero. So one plus one is two. So under everything under root two. Similarly for QR, for QR what happens? This is my x2, y2, z2, and this is my x1, y1, z1. So x2, y2, z2 is 0, 0, 1. And x1, y1, z1 is 0, 1, 0. So now you do that. 0 minus 0 whole square plus 0 minus 1 whole square plus 1 minus 0 whole square. You'll get again root 2. Similarly, RP. RP means R starting at R, ending at P. So I'll make this as x2, y2, z2, and this as x1, y1, z1. Coordinates of P as x2. Here, whatever comes first, I will make it as uh, uh, whatever I made. I forget this. I mean, it doesn't matter, but just to keep to a, a convention. PQ, in the first one, PQ, I made this x1, y1, z1, and this as x2, y2, z2. Correct. So, first, whatever first symbol comes here, RP. So R is X1, Y1, Z1, and P is X2, Y2, Z2. There are a lot of convention I have made. You can see both ways are same. So R is X2, Y2, Z2, and P, uh, sorry, X1, Y1, Z1, and P is X2, Y2, Z2. So X2 minus X1. So that is uh, one minus zero whole square, plus zero minus zero whole square, plus zero minus one whole square. Again, you'll get root two. You just check, uh, there's nothing much in what I'm telling you. Just which one to make x2, y2, z2, which one to make x1, y1, z1. So on all three lengths of all three sides are equal, which is equal to root two, which we saw in GeoGebra also, that it was showing 1.41. That's an approximate answer. So it's same as root two. So since all three sides are equal, PQR is an equilateral triangle. Try to understand what we have done here. What we have done here is, the, this was the problem. Given three points, show that these are the vertices of an equilateral triangle. All I had to do was to find length of any of the two, uh, uh, length of a side, which there are three sides. So I'll find PQ, QR, and RP. So for to find PQ, I'll call one of them X1, Y1, Z1, another one is X2, Y2, Z2. So I found, use the formula, distance between X2, Y2, Z2, and X1, Y1, Z1 is X2, root of X2 minus X1 whole square, etc., etc. I have done that. Similarly for QR, similarly for P, RP. So since all three answers are same, there's an equilateral triangle. I hope that much is clear. Similarly, uh, this is generally, this is the kind of question they could ask in distance formula. There could be some other questions, but you have to, we will see where else one can use this as we go along. Another uh, uh, formula which you have in your syllabus is called section formula. So here also it's similar. A, B, B a line segment in three-dimensional space. Uh, so here is the three-dimensional space. A, B is a straight line. We don't know. A is here, B is here. I'm not saying it's in a plane. It is in three-dimensional space. Anywhere it could be. A is X1, Y1, Z1. B is X2, Y2, Z2. So now what I want is, I want a point C on the line segment AB. I'll join the line segment AB and I'll pick a point C on AB such that this AB must be divided internally in the ratio M is to N. That means if I, I'll pick up a point C on AB such that if this length AC is M, AC by CB, basically length AC by length CB is equal to m by n. m by n could be anything. m could be any integer, any could be anything. For let's for this course, we'll take them to be integers. So m and n may be three and four. That means I want a point C which will break AB in the ratio three is to four. That means AC must be three times something, and BC must be 
four times the same thing. That is what ratio means. AC by CB is M by N. Now I want to know coordinates of C given coordinates of A and B. So try to understand this. I'm given a straight line. Or rather I'm given two points, A and B. Both coordinates are given. I want to find a new point C on the line segment AB such that AB is divided by C in the ratio M is to N. So what does that mean? It means what I have written on the screen, what you see on your screen. AC by CB must be equal to M by N. I want the coordinates of C. Obviously it depends on coordinates of A, coordinates of B and M and N. So the formula for that is this. If coordinates of A are x1, y1, z1 and coordinates of B are x2, y2, z2, then coordinates of C are given by mx2 plus nx1 divided by m plus n, my2 plus ny1 divided by m plus n, mz2 plus nz1 divided by m plus n. Try to understand this. You see, I'm trying to break up AB in the ratio m is to n. And this is x1, y1, z1 and this is x2, y2, z2. So I want the coordinates of this. X coordinate of this is m times x2 plus n times x1. So m times the point which is not in touch with this m part. That means a and c are not there, are the ones which will make length m. So I want the coordinates of b. So uh, try to understand this. m into x2 plus n into x1 divided by m plus n. That is the formula. Uh, I won't give you the derivation of this formula. It's pretty straightforward, but it is not there in your syllabus, so I will not bother. So this is, uh, similarly, this is the x coordinate of C. This is the y coordinate of C. Same story, m y2 plus n y1 divided by m plus n. m z2 plus n z1 divided by m plus n. So, uh, remember one, you know the other two. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, as a special case, you see, uh, this is the thing, interesting thing. If m equal to n equal to one, that means this length is equal to this length. AC by CB is one by one. One by one means, uh, Length AC must be equal to length CB. That means C is the midpoint of A and B. So I want to find what are the coordinates of the midpoint. So you put M equal to one and N equal to one, you will get X2 plus X1 divided by one plus one, which is two. Here you will get Y2 plus Y1 because M equal to one and N equal to one. So M plus N is two. So it will be get Y2 plus Y1 by two, Z2 plus Z1 by two. So one writes it in a, you know, more easily, aesthetically better way. You want to write x2 plus x1, but you'll write x1 plus x2 by 2, y1 plus y2 by 2, z1 plus z2 by 2. This is the coordinates of the midpoint of two point, uh, of a line segment, which are given by A and B. A is x1, y1, z1, and B is x2, y2, z2. Also, centroid of a triangle whose vertices are x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and x3, y3, z3 are given by x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 2, y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3, z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3. This is a standard result. I won't tell you the more details about it. Uh, you must have done in your high school geometry. Median means it's the point of intersection of, sorry, not median, what is it called? Centroid. Centroid means it's the point of intersection of medians of the triangle. Median means you take a triangle, a median of a triangle is you pick up any vertex, pick up the midpoint of the opposite side and you join the two. That's a median. You have three medians from each of the vertex, each of the vertices. So all three are concurrent. That means they'll meet at a point. That's a non-trivial result. And that point is called centroid of the triangle. Now in this, we won't bother about so much. You need to know centroid of a triangle. Its coordinates are this x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3, z1 plus z2 by z3, z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3. Given x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and x3, y3, z3 are the vertices of the triangle. In this course, I am focusing only from the examination point of view. I am not trying to teach too many things which are, uh, you know, they are interesting, but there isn't time for all those things. There is one more section formula. You see here, first case, what we did in the section formula, we drew the line AB and then picked up a point C in the middle of A and B. Middle means between A and B. A and B are there, and then I picked up a point C in between A and B and told you AC by BC must be equal to M by N. 
Now I will tell you a different story. It's the same thing. I will take A, B, but I don't want C in the middle of A and B. It means in between A and B. I want it to be away from A and B. That means C is a point outside A, B. So it, to figure will look like this. A, B is this line and C is a point outside A, B. Means I extend A, B and C is a point outside A, B such that a C by B C is M by N. That formula still holds good. A, C, that statement holds good still. I'll say C divides A B externally in the ratio M is to N if A C by B C is M by N. The same thing is true. I'll say C if it is inside between A and B, I'll say it divides A B internally. So internally, externally. Of course, you can ask me if I extend A B this side and then make a see what happens there. I will leave it to you to figure out what happens there. So now I want coordinates of C in terms of A, B and M and N. If I know this point A, if I know point B, if I know M, if I know N, I want to find the coordinates of C. For that, again, it's the same formula, actually almost same formula. Instead of plus, you have minus everywhere mx2 minus nx1. So remember, it's the same thing. Um, if this is uh, x1, y1, z1, a is x1, y1, z1, and b is x2, y2, z2, and a, c is m, and b, c is n, then m, x2. So that means this is what comes. m comes with b, and n comes with a, means coordinates of a. So this is the formula. mx2 minus nx1 by m minus n, comma m y2 minus n y1 by m minus n m z2 minus n z1 divided by m minus n. This is the coordinates of a point which divides a line segment a p a b externally in the ratio m is to n. I hope it's clear what it means to say external division. So let's see a couple of examples. Find the coordinates of the point which divides the line joining points 2, minus 3, 1 and 4, minus 6, 5 internally in the ratio of 1 is to 3. That means what? I want a point which will divide, you consider this point, 2 comma 3 minus 3 comma 1. Maybe we can try to see it in uh, uh, GeoGebra. It may help. So let us start afresh. Yeah, so I want uh, 2 comma, uh, what are the coordinates there? Oops, sorry, I don't want the syllabus I have seen already. I don't want this. I want the PPT. 2 comma minus 3 comma 1. So I'll 2 comma minus 3 comma 1. This is the point. You can see already point A has come here in the picture. 2 comma minus 3 comma 1. And what is the other point? Other point is 4 comma minus 6 comma 5. 4 comma minus six comma five. Is that correct? Four comma minus six comma five, correct? Four comma minus six comma five, correct. So this is the other point. Now I want to join this line. You don't have to do all this for your exam. And just to make you understand, I'm uh, uh, giving this picture. See, this is the line segment AB. Its length is 5.3 and it says here yeah, distance formula. If you use, you'll get that answer, but we don't care about it right now. Now, uh, just to make you understand this, I'm showing it to you from different points. See, this is the a length, a, uh, line segment AB. You can see length, line A has coordinates 2, comma, 3, comma, minus 1. And see, two, the red is x-axis, green is y-axis, and blue is z-axis. So 2, comma, 3, comma, minus 1, and 4, comma, minus 6, comma, 5. So there are um, two points A, B. Now on this line A, B, I want to point, find a point C such that that C will break A, B in the ratio one is to three. Because there are two points, but I won't bother about those things. Um, so I hope it is clear. So this is what we want to do. These two points, two comma minus three comma one and four comma minus six comma five. I want it to be broken up internally in the ratio one is to three. I want to break up this line in the ratio one is to three. So I'll take a point here. So then this length is one centimeter, then this is three centimeters. Of course, it's not be one. This is one, this is three times that. So that is what I want. 
So, <clears throat> uh, how to do this? We use the formula directly. Use section formula with x1, y1, z1 is 2 comma minus 3 comma 1 and x2 comma y2 comma z2 is 4 comma minus 6 comma 5 and m is 1, n is 3. Use This is the section formula. This is the coordinates of the point which breaks the uh, line segment joining these two points x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 in the ratio 1 is to 3, m is to n. This is the formula. So you substitute it here. So substitute x1, y1, z1 in place of 2, comma minus 3, comma 1. In place of x2, y2, z2, you substitute 4, comma minus 6, comma 5. And m equal to 1, n equal to 3. Then you get this. 1 into 4. Try to understand this. 1 m. If m is 1, I'll go to x2. 1 into 4 plus 3 into 2. X coordinate of the first point. Divided by 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is m plus n. And similarly, 1 into y coordinate of the second point plus 3 into y coordinate of the first point. 3 into minus 3. 1 into minus 6 plus 3. And denominator as 1 plus 3, m plus 3. And similarly, the last one, 1 into x, y z coordinate of the first point plus 3 into z coordinate of the, sorry, 1 into z coordinate of the second point plus 3 into z coordinate of the first point. So 1 into 5 plus 3 into 1 divided by 1 plus 2. So you carry out this 1, 4s are 4, 3, 2s are 6, so 6 plus 4, 10. 1 plus 3 is 4, denominator is easy. So minus 6, minus 9, which is minus 15. So 5 uh, plus 3, 8. I hope I have done it correctly. So 10 by 4 is 5 by 2, minus 15 by 4, and 2. So this is the answer. This is the point which breaks line into three parts. So let us try to see it in the picture once. You don't have to do the picture part in your exam, but that is only for you to understand. 5 by 2 minus 15 by 4 and 2. So let us check that. Five. Let us mark this point. 5 by 2 comma uh, I forget what is the point. Uh, minus 15 by 4 Oops, sorry. minus 15 by 4 comma 2 I, sorry comma 2 so if this is the point you can see the point c which has come out here this is this point 5 by 2 minus 15 by 4 and 2 you can see that point is all in the picture if you see you can see that picture uh, c is already on point, line a b and this breaks up the line AB in the ratio 1 is to 3. How do I know that? I don't know that from the picture, but you can see more or less. If length of AC is 1, length of BC is 3 times the length of AC. That is what we are trying to see here. You see here. If you want precisely, you will have to find out distance between A and C and then B and C and figure out that length of AC is 3 times length of Sorry, length of BC is three times the length of AC. You don't need to do all this for exam. For exam, you just need to figure out that this is this x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and mn. You must be able to put it in this formula to get this particular answer. This is the answer for that means this point is the one which breaks up x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 in the ratio 1 is to 3. That's all you need. Now, similarly, externally, I'll ask. So find the, I'll, I'll not show the geometry of this. I'll just say, I mean, you can write down, if you know GeoGebra, you can see all these things on GeoGebra. Find the, by the way, GeoGebra is a free software. You should download it on your laptops and use it. It's very useful. Find the coordinates of the point which divides the line joining the points 1 to 0 and 0, 6, comma, minus 3 externally in the ratio of 4 is to 3. This means again now I have to use external section formula with external uh, division. So section formula says uh, whatever uh, you can see it on the screen with x1, y1, z1 as 1, 2, 0, x2, y2, z2 as 0, 6, minus 3 and m is 4, n is 3. So I'll write down m x2 minus n x1 divided by m minus n. Remember always it's the same story m into x2 plus minus 
n into x1. Here, why it is minus? Because it's external division. If it were plus, it would have been internal division. That means if you draw the line segment AB and produce it further, you will find a point on that which will break up segment AB externally in the ratio 4 is to 3. So you substitute all these points, m, uh, all these values, m equal to 4, n equal to 3, x1, y1, z1 is 1, 2, 0, and x2, y2, z2 is 0, 6, 0, 6 minus 3. In this formula, you will get this. This is what I, 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 what I told, it's coming on the screen now. x1, y1, z1 is this point, x2, y2, z2 is this, m is 4, n is 3, and use it in section formula, you will get a point. So 4 into 0, m into x2 minus n into x1, 3 into 1, 4 into 0 minus 3 into 1 by 4 minus 3. Similarly, uh, 4 into 6 minus 3 into 2 and 4 into minus 3 divided by 3 minus 3 into 0 divided by always m minus n, which is 1 in this case. So you carry out this 4 minus 3, no, 4 into 0 is 4, 0, 0 minus 3 is minus 3, 4, 6 are 24, 24 minus 6 is uh, 18, and 4 minus 4, uh, sorry, minus 12 by 1. So it is okay. Minus 3, minus 18, and minus 12. That is the coordinate. So this point breaks up this line segment in the ratio 4 is to 3 externally. That is what this says. I won't show the geometry of it. I'm sure you can go through this. Uh, there is a slight twist questions. It's uh, here in the previous two questions. What we did was we gave you two external point, two points, and asked you to find a point which breaks the line segment joining these two in some ratio. Now there is a twist. The, here it says find the ratio in which line joining these two points is divided by this point. That means I'm giving you two endpoints and I'm giving you coordinates of C. Means I'm telling you this is a point on PQ, which I want you to tell me how is it dividing. So means what ratio is it dividing? So let us use this fact from our primary school. M is to N means same as S is to 1, where S is M by N. What I'm trying to tell you is 3 is to 4 is same as 3 by 4 is to 1. 3 is to 4 is same as 3 by 4 is to 1. Why, what is the advantage in doing this? I have only one variable which is called S here. Here there are two variables M and N, but I have only one equation. I want two related variables. So that is why I will transform this problem from M is to N to S is to 1, where S is M by N. So let's assume R, that is this point divides PQ in the ratio S is to 1. If I compute S, then I know M by N, then I know M and N. That is what the whole idea is. So assuming R divides internally PQ in the ratio S is to 1, which is same as M is to N, one computes coordinates of R. So let us check if, if PQ is divisible, is divided in the ratio S is to 1, then I will have this. P, I know coordinates of P, I know coordinates of Q, so I'm making it divide, making the point R divide in the ratio S is to 1. I don't know S, I'm trying to find that. So it will be 1 into, in this formula I put, 1 into, see if I want to divide PQ in the ratio S is to 1, I'll say 1 into coordinates of, X coordinate of P plus S into X, X coordinate of Q divided by S plus 1. And Y coordinate similar will be 1 into Y coordinate of P plus S into y coordinate of Q divided by S plus 1, similarly for Z coordinate. That's what I have done here. 1 into X coordinate of P plus S into X coordinate of Q divided by S plus 1. Similarly, Y coordinate, Z coordinate. You carry on this, simplify this, you get four, 2 plus 4S. I hope I have correct. See, 1 into 2 is 2, S into 4 is 4S, etc. So I think I have done it correctly because I have cross checked, I think. So 2 plus 4S by S plus 1. 3s minus 1 by s plus 1, s plus 3 by s plus 1. So, but I'm, this is the point which breaks 
PQ in the ratio S is to 1. But I know R is 20 by 7, 5 by 7, 15 by 7. So if I put this equal to 20, that means x this x coordinate of R must be 20 by 7, this point. So then you take it 20 by 7 is 4s. Uh, I mean, 2 plus 4s doesn't look nice. So we write it 4s plus 2. 4s plus 2 by s plus 1. This means you cross multiply 20 into s plus 1 is equal to 4s plus 2 into 7. 7 into 4s plus 2. So 20 into s, 20s 20 plus 20 is equal to 28s plus 14, which when you simplify, you get minus 8s is minus 6. So s is 3 by 4. s is 3 by 4 means my uh, point uh, R divides PQ in the ratio 3 is to 4. You see, because S is 3 by 4. So I'll say this is 3 by 4 is to 1, which is same as saying 3 is to 4. And that's what I told you in the beginning. If M by N, M by N, M, if it breaks up into ratio M is to N, which is same as S is to 1, where S is M by N. So that's what I have used here. So S is 3 by 4. So R divides PQ in the ratio three by four. In fact, you can ask me, sir, I could have taken five by seven equal to three S minus one by S plus one. That will also give you the same answer. You could have taken any other two also equal, means the Y coordinate of this equal to five by seven or Z coordinate of this equal to 15 by seven. In either of the cases, you will get S equal to three by four. So it doesn't matter which of the coordinates you take. <clears throat> Any one of them, if you do it, it's sufficient. Uh, why does this happen? I won't tell you now. That requires a bit more mathematics than what I'm trying to develop in this uh, course. So I will not tell you the reason, but I'm just bringing it to your notice. That's all. So similarly, there may be one more question like this. I hope it is clear in this problem what I have done. In this problem, remember, find the ratio in which the line joining points P and Q is divided by some points. So I'm giving you three points two points P and Q and R, which is on PQ. I want you to tell me what is the ratio in which R is dividing PQ. So what I will do, I'll say, okay, let it divide in the ratio M is to N, which is same as S is to one, where S is equal to M by N. So now I use the formula S is to one on PQ. I don't know S, I'm trying to find it. S is to, so S into whatever, one X coordinate of P plus Y uh, one into, uh, y coordinate of p, x coordinate of q, etc, etc. I will do the section formula. What we have done here, <clears throat> this is the section formula I used. And I will equate this point, this point to this point. You can take any one of the coordinates, you will get the same result is all I have told here. This is, this is one kind of, one more kind of problem. Yet another kind of problem, find the ratio in which x, y plane divides the line joining these two. Okay, this may be, one should try to see a picture, it will help. Minus two, three, five. So let us see the picture here. That may help. Minus two, three, five. So minus two, three, I'll change these points. Minus two, three, five. So A has gone to minus two, three, five. And B is what point? Uh, four, one, minus 10. So four, uh, one and uh, minus 10. These are the two points A and B. You see, I uh, can't see the whole thing here. Uh, A is here, B is somewhere down there. Just a minute. See, B is somewhere way down. One can't see it only unless I rotate it too much. Uh, see, B is way down here uh, because Z coordinate is minus 10. It has to go all the way up to 10. So what I will do, I will uh, zoom out. Uh, see there, now A, B is come. So you can see. A is the point which is given there. A is this point minus two, three comma one. And B is the point four, one comma minus 10. This is a straight line. Don't bother too much about all these things. What you need to know is C is not required now anyway. 
what you need to know here is so there is a line segment which is joining a and b correct there is a line segment which is joining a and b so that we see here the question is you take the line joining minus 2 3 5 and 4 1 minus 10 i want to see you see in the picture you can see what is the there is a point on xy plane which breaks this line means this line passes through xy plane a is above the x obviously because uh, a z coordinate of a is positive z coordinate of b is negative z coordinate means positive means it is above this xy plane a and z coordinate of b is negative means b is below xy plane so both are one is above x plane a is above xy plane b is below xy plane now if you join it must meet xy plane somewhere that point i want you to tell me what ratio is it dividing this line that is the question understand that see this is the line ab you can see the picture now the question is if i see that point where uh, this point i don't know that point i have to find that this point what ratio does it break up ab into that is the question so let us see how to go about solving this problem so find the ratio in which xy plane divides the line joining points minus 2 3 5 and 4 1 minus 10 and thus write the coordinates of the point of division you have to even write the point the coordinates of that point how to do it so let us use the usual uh, section formula which means i will say let that point this point on xy plane let it divide this line in the ratio s is to 1 i'll find s i don't know i'll try to find it so these are the two points and let the division be in the ratio s is to 1 p b so in this i have seem to have made a small change i said p b point on xy plane dividing the line join of this and this so and the division b in the ratio s is to 1 that means a is x1 y1 z1 is minus 2 3 5 b is x2 y2 z2 is 4 1 minus 10 and coordinates of p is given by because p divides a b in the ratio s is to 1 so usual s into uh, s is to 1 so 1 into x coordinate of a plus s into x coordinate of b which is 4 divided by s plus 1 similarly for y and z coordinates I'll get this. I, I think I've done it correctly. Please go when you uh, when you if and when you listen to this lecture, please try to verify that I have done it correctly and I have not made a mistake. Uh, so you get this is the coordinates of point P, which breaks A B in the ratio S is to one. But what do I know about P? P lies on X Y plane. That means Z coordinate is zero. P is on XY plane. I know this because that's what I'm looking for. See, till here, there is nothing to say P is on XY plane. This is a point P which breaks AB in the ratio S is to 1. S could be anything. It could be anywhere. P could be anywhere on the line segment AB. Now I'm using the condition which is given to me. What is the condition? Since P is on XY plane, its Z coordinate must be 0. Correct? Its z coordinate must be 0. That means what is the z coordinate of p from the formula applied? I can see this is the z coordinate of p minus 10s plus 5 by s plus 1. If this has to be 0, minus 10s plus 5 must be 0, which means s is equal to half, which means a b is divided in the ratio half is to 1, which means 1 is to 2. So I found the what ratio does this point break up this point breaks up the line a b in the ratio one is to two so length of this point to a if the length is one length of this point to b will be double of that you can check by using coordinate uh, uh, formula first formula what we did uh, distance formula you can check that i will not do it here you don't need to do it in the exam now, so S is half. If I substitute S equal to half in this set of coordinates, I will get coordinates of the P completely. So put S equal to half in this, I'll get half if you put four into half, that will be two. 
2 minus 2 0. So this is 0. S equal to half means half plus 3. That is uh, half plus 3 is 3 and a half is 7 by 2. So this is a printing mistake. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, divided by S plus 1. S plus 1 is 3 by 2. So this is 7 by 3. 7 by 2 divided by 3 by 2, which is 7 by 3. Correct. Uh, all I'm telling is just substitute S equal to half in this. This I've already seen. S equal to half, I get 0. So this is the coordinates of x, y plane as it's supposed to be. x coordinate and y, uh, z coordinate, both are 0 in this. It so happens like that. Let's check uh, the picture if it is uh, reflected. It must be. You see the line uh, is passing through x-axis. Uh, you see, it is the green line. It is the li line AB is passing through the green line which means its x coordinate is also zero. This is a very special kind of thing. That need not happen everywhere. So anyway, if you don't understand the picture, don't bother. But if you understand the picture, it will help you to see what we are doing. So x coordinate happens to be zero, y coordinate has to be zero, sorry, z coordinate has to be zero, and I found y coordinate here. The, I hope this part is clear. So what we have done in this problem is, oops, started from beginning now. Hmm. Sorry. It's a recall for you. This is what we did. Line joining these two points. The point on the XY plane breaks it up into what ratio is what we have found. And also we have found the coordinates of that point using section formula. I hope it is clear. Point x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. Let it be divided the ratio s is to 1. So then this is the coordinates of p. Now in this, I know z coordinate of p is 0. So if I put the last one equal to 0, uh, I will get value of s, which means I know what ratio uh, a, b is divided by p. And then substitute the same value of s in the coordinates of that point, which divides a and b in the ratio s is to 1. I will get these three uh, coordinates, which is correct. Okay, let's check one more. Uh, uh, now, maybe next chapter is uh, direction cosines. I will stop here and uh, in the next lecture, I will continue from here. Uh, thank you. Uh, please uh, feel free to contact me if you have any uh, doubt. Uh, so, how do I stop share?